Okay, so we're using a blank workbook. We are going to be working with VBA this whole semester. Oh, let me give you just kind of a little bit of background on VBA. We're going to roll the clock back to the 1970s. You weren't born, and I was just a kid. Um, but we had a new software invented called VisiCalc. Its successor was called SuperCalc, and it was SuperCalc with the Apple II computer in the 1970s that had, com that had businesses for the first time looking at a personal computer and thinking this personal computer might be useful. What could SuperCalc do? It had rows, it had columns, you could put a formula that referenced antecedent cells, so when you change those cells, the results of the formula totaled up, would, 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 would uh, adjust, and that was it, and it was amazing. It's amazing. And it, it really took off pretty quickly in terms of how, how quickly did we start using spreadsheets in business. We saw the value straight away. Initially, in budgeting, everyone did their budgets in spreadsheets, and it branched out from there. But we learned pretty quickly. It was before the mouse. There's no mouse on an Apple II. When, when did we get the mouse for the Apple? For sure by the Macintosh. Has it happened before that? Probably a little bit before. So <coughs> everything's done by keystrokes. And we learned pretty quickly that we did the same thing over and over again. And we found ourselves typing exactly the same keystrokes. And we thought, wouldn't it be great if we could record these keystrokes? And, and presto, the idea of a macro was born. So it was initially is what they were. It was just the keystrokes that were recorded when you, you, know, you did something, just record those keystrokes. In fact, you would choose a cell. You would say, go to that cell and start recording my macro, and the keystrokes you typed would just go into the cell as it went down. Bop, 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 bop. Uh, when, I, when I was a TA as a student here, yeah, we were teaching Quattro Pro, and that's the way it was. The we now had the mouse. We could use the mouse, but the macro recorder didn't record anything into the mouse. It really only recorded the keystrokes. And so shortly after I graduated, um, in fact, a year after I graduated, Microsoft changed the world of macros. They said, we are going to change. Instead of recording the keystrokes, when you do something, we're going to record what you did in a computer programming language. Now, the language we're going to be using in this class is called VBA. Does anyone know the name of the language that Microsoft first used for recording macros in 1995? First of all, were you born in 1995? A few of you? All of you? Anyone here younger than or born after 1995? few of you, okay, so <coughs> you don't remember because you weren't there, but what was the language? Visual Basic for Applications is exactly the same language. It has changed very little over the years. If you would have told me when I was learning this like in like 1996 or 1997 when I was first learning this stuff, if you had told me that I was going to be you know, still teaching VBA like in the year 2020, <laughs> I would have laughed. <laughs> That's ridiculous. By the time I think you get three or four years out of a language, then it's kind of outdated. You've got to retool. But Microsoft has brought it along, and they've updated it somewhat, not a whole lot. But now Microsoft would really like to get rid of VBA, but they can't because there's so much installed base, people that just depend on it. You say, you know what? Excel's not going to do VBA anymore. What do people do? They start wondering, is Excel really the tool that I should be using? For this? And Microsoft doesn't want that to happen. Uh, and so, you know, Microsoft... Where would you say is Microsoft lost its dominance in the operating system world? Compared to the 1990s? Totally. I mean, they're still the dominant player, but there's, um, you look at what Linux has done as well as what Mac OS has done, and you say Microsoft is not nearly as strong as they were before. How about in the spreadsheet world? They're probably starting a little pressure from Google Sheets, but that's it. And Google Sheets is not business. Has business like totally embraced Google Sheets? No. Who's embraced Google Sheets? High school has embraced Google Sheets. That's about it. And so, um, yeah, so Microsoft is, realizes they've got the dominant product here. They're doing everything they can to protect it, which means, which means VBA is here to stay, you know, at least for the next 10 years. You'll be comfortable that VBA is going to be around. Um, but where is it around? Well, Excel, but is it in every version of Excel? And the answer is no. It's in, the it's in the Office desktop version. It's in the Mac desktop, well, it's Office, and the, the Windows desktop version, the Mac desktop version, that's it. Where else is Excel? In the cloud, there's an online version. Any VBA there? iPad, any VBA there? Android, any VBA there? No, no, and no. Uh, now, they have a way to do automation in those other platforms, but it's not VBA. So. And, and then the reason is, it is no small undertaking to write a VBA interpreter to work on those different operating systems. Um, and they just said, we're not going to do it. And so instead, they're pushing forward with another language called, uh, another environment called Office JS. 
it is nowhere near what you want to touch for doing work for yourself. If you're thinking, I'm going to do, make an add-in that other people are going to consume, that's, that's a viable alternative to VBA, but it still has maybe one, overall, maybe one-tenth of the functionality of VBA. They're continually building it out, but it is way more complex to develop in. So in terms of you're saying, I'm going to be writing some automation for Excel that I'm going to use personally, VBA is your language. Um, and so that's, that's the history of where we're going. So let's go ahead and start by, go, by going to your developer tab. If you look here up on the top, you've got a developer tab here in the ribbon. Um, what? You don't have a developer tab? What does that mean? Is your version of Excel defective? The answer is no, it's not defective. You just haven't... Oh, as it turns out, there is so much power available, raw power right here in VBA, Microsoft thinks it will not be healthy for mere mortals to have access to this power. <laughs> well, and how do they know if you deserve access to VBA? You can figure out how to get the developer tab. If you can't figure out how to get that developer tab, this isn't for you. That's what they're saying. So um, you're in luck. I'm going to show you how to do it you know, today. But the truth is, you don't want my mother playing with VBA. It, no good will come of that. <laughs> and so we're glad that that, that, that developer menu isn't there. Uh, so here's how we get it. We're going to choose file. And let me zoom out a little bit here. Mm, Windows minus minus. Uh, and then come down here uh, to options. It's kind of behind the little thing here. You can't see it. Uh, and that should bring up your options. You're going to now select over here, customize the ribbon. And you'll see all these tabs over here all checked, except for your developer tab is not checked. Just put a check mark right there on the developer tab, and you'll have the developer tab. If you're tired of the home tab, you know, you can uncheck that one. It will go away. The insert, you don't need to insert anything anymore. You can get rid of it. Um, or, or this semester, what do we have coming up, beginning of April? The very beginning of April, April Fool's Day. So your roommate walks away in his computer, maybe you go uncheck his home tab. <laughs> The prank, that's probably a sin. You'd have to repent. Maybe you shouldn't do Well, on the, on the other hand, I do encourage repentance, so uh, maybe so. Okay, so developer tab checked, and then you've got the developer tab showing. This then has the tools that we'll need for doing all of this VBA stuff. If you're on the Mac and you want to enable it, I can get you started on this. You're going to go to choose the Excel menu at the very top, not on the ribbon, but even higher in the, the menu, and you're going to choose Preferences. And then from there, you're on your own. There's going to be some picture that comes with some options, and I think one of those, if you look at them, you'll be able to figure it out. Okay, so here it is, Visual Basic. This is the, the, the uh, turns out Visual Basic for applications is too long to fit nicely on a button, and so they just call it Visual Basic. Um, but the language is Visual Basic for applications. What's the difference between Visual Basic and Visual Basic for applications? The current version of Visual Basic is called Visual Basic.net. It is a full-blown development environment. I could write a program like Excel with, with VB.net. Um, Visual Basic for Applications, I'm never going to write a standalone program. It always has to have some host application that it runs. That's why it's called for applications. It's a programming language that runs inside of another application. And so you've got to have Excel to be able to run your VBA. You can write a VBA a program, but unless the person has Excel, they can't run it. Um, by the way, it's the same language that you would use for automating Word or PowerPoint or Access or Visio. And there's a kind of a handful of other ones that Microsoft said we're going to automate with this language. Okay, so I'm glad you're all sitting down, except for one guy who's headed out. Maybe he's going to go drop the class. I don't know. <laughs> and you know, because we're going we're gonna to click this button right here, the Visual Basic button. It'll open up the Visual Basic Editor, and your Excel is going to look different than you've ever seen it look before. I, mean, I did this once, and there was, a, a, there was a student right in the front row who let out an audible gasp. Oh, my gosh, what have I done? You know, Excel looks so different. In fact, here it probably even looks different. It probably doesn't have this immediate window showing, so you probably look something a little bit more like this. You've got a project, Explorer, and this all looks very foreign, and you're thinking, should, is now the time to drop the class? But don't worry, I'm going to get you familiar with this. So this, you know, it, it hasn't changed your Excel. It's just sitting on top of Excel. We can move this out of the way. Your Excel is still back there. So uh, this is our environment. We're going to start off today by seeing the, a tool called the Immediate Window. So choose View, Immediate Window. This is probably going to start off for you down here at the bottom. Get it to dock there. 
Um, and that's a fine place for it to stay for you, but just for working in this class, I'm going to bring it up to the top so that um, it's just a little easier for folks in the back to see. The immediate window seems like a really strange name, but the immediate window is a place where I can immediately execute any VBA statement. Now, when I'm, when I'm you know, trying to write something to, um, to automate Excel, I'm going to have to have that code get saved. I'm going to want it to stick around in my workbook. It really will be a part of the workbook. That's not the immediate window. And we'll, we'll probably see how to do that today. But the immediate window is just a place to play. It's a somewhat safe place to try something that you might think is dangerous. Um, you could still do dangerous things here. You know, it's not you know, totally protected, but it's a place where I can just come and say, you know what, I just want to execute some line of code. So, for example, I could come here and say print. And I could tell it to print something. I could say print 5 plus 5. What's 5 plus 5? It's 10. VBA interpreter will figure that out and will say, oh, you're trying to do 5 plus 5. You want to print the result of 5 plus 5. It does the math and it prints the result. So I just executed my very first line of VBA. Woohoo! <laughs> you're now a VBA programmer. Go forth and program. <coughs> Okay, so, but, now here's the kind of fundamental idea of, uh, of VBA is that the language itself, it's got maybe 80 different commands. It's, is that a lot? What do you say? Is that a lot of different commands for a programming language? Not very many. That's not very many. So how can we do all these amazing things with VBA? And it's because of a thing called an object. Now, the very first object-oriented programming language in the 1960s was a language called Simula. It didn't catch on. About the mid 1980s, Eighties? Did I say eighties before? Simula was in the sixties, the mid eighties. Object-oriented programming really catches on with a language. Do you know the language? The first really successful object-oriented language? C, C plus plus. Yeah, so C plus plus. C sharp is a Microsoft variant on C plus plus. But yeah, it's an object-oriented programming. Language. So it was the early nineties. I was a student here taking all these information systems classes, even though I was an accounting student, and I thought I should take this class in object-oriented programming. That was the name of the class, object-oriented programming. I took the class, and it was not the best experience of my life, but I was about halfway through the class when I had a realization. And the realization was, here I am, halfway through the class, I still have no idea what an object is. That was kind of a frightening thought to me. What is an object? I know, this class is called object-oriented programming. I still don't know what an object is. So I want to make sure we don't have that happen here in this class. First of all, is VBA an object-oriented programming language? And the answer is uh, sort of. You know, there are some things that some people say that's just fundamental to object-oriented language, something called polymorphism or inheritance that VBA doesn't, ex doesn't exhibit, but we can still create our own object classes. We can instantiate those classes. We can do a lot of object-oriented things. It is for sure an object-based language, meaning that we're going to live and breathe objects. You're in luck because I'm going to tell you what an object is. It's day one. Are you ready? An object is a thing. That's it. An object's a thing. Why don't they call it thing-oriented programming? It doesn't kind of roll off the tongue as object-oriented programming. It's a little better. Thing-oriented programming, yeah. So we want to get a little more specific in Excel. An object's anything that we can manipulate through code. Let's pop back over here to Excel. What do you think? You think that cell is an object? Yes, that cell is an object. How about that column, an object? Yes. How about this row? This row, yes. How about the worksheet? Yeah. How about the collection of all the worksheets in the workbook? Yes. How about the workbook itself? Yes. How about the whole of Excel as an application? The answer is yes. Those are all objects. Those are things we're going to manipulate. So the reason that VBA is really powerful and lets us do great things is not because of the language, only 80 statements. It's because objects have this other functionality built into them. Now, there's two characteristics of objects that be really important to us. So an object is a thing that we can manipulate through code. Two important characteristics. One of the important characteristics of an object is that objects have properties. Now, if you're just thinking about that, that, that sentence in English, objects have properties. What would you think an object, what do you think a property is? I mean, just tell me, what do you think a property is? Give me examples, but kind of give me more of a definition. In the back? Oh, dimensions, yeah, it's, it's like, so there we go. Yeah, it's something that describes the way the object is. It's a property. Hey, look at me. Like, you might look at a property and call it handsome. You know, whoa. You know, handsome. And, you know, something that describes the way this thing is, that's what a property is in the, in the world of, 
of object-oriented programming in VBA. And so I'm going to look at a particular cell here. Let me zoom in a little bit. How do I zoom in in this? Some way to zoom by scrolling, but I can't do it on my touchpad, so zoom in over here. So I'm going to look over here at like C4. Sounds explosive if you're not careful here, but um, so that that's an object. So let me let me come over here to maybe I'll split my screen. There we go. So here in my immediate window, I'm going to do something that refers to that object, and we're going to take a look at that object's property. So first, there's several ways that I can refer to the object. Um, some objects actually have names, like the object has a name. This object, this range object, this cell object doesn't really have a name. There's just too many. How many cells are there on a worksheet in Excel? It's not infinite. There's a limit. How many rows? 1.04 million. How many columns? 16,000. Multiply those two numbers together. That's how many cells there are. That's too many names. They have like individual names for these cells. So we have ways to refer to these cells. And so in code here, I might say I'm going to refer to that cell by, by doing this. I can do it this way. Active cell. So active cell is a way to refer to an object. It only refer to a particular cell, but that refers to a particular object. Now, I, so that will be a reference to that object. I'm referring to that object. Now I want to do something with a property. So I'm going to hit the dot, and presto, I get a little help that shows up. And I'm going to just come down to a little bit lower here, so there's one called address. So address is a property of, of the object. Every range object, even if it's only one cell in the range, has the property address. It's something that tells me something. It describes how the object is. Well, I've got a range object here. Well, describe it to me. OK, here's a property. It's called address. And I would know something about that object. So I'll hit tab here, and we've got there it is. Now, at this point, What's the address of that cell? Somebody just tell me the address. C4. So what if I, if I walked up to you and I said C4? What would you do? C4? Yeah, you might run away. Maybe you're thinking I should see the letter 4, the number 4 out here somewhere. C, 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 Dick, run, C4. There's a 4 out here somewhere. No, it's not an instruction. So properties aren't instructions, and so I can't just execute them here. Remember, remember what I said? I said print 5 plus 5. That's an instruction. Printing a value, that's something the interpreter, the, the software that takes the VBA and translates it into machine language to actually execute it, that can understand that, something to do. This isn't something to do. So first thing, anytime I'm working here in the immediate window, I've got to do, everything I do here has to be an instruction. So what could I do to turn this C4 into an instruction? I could print C4, yeah, so print the active cell address. Now if I hit enter on that line, it will execute. And oh, there we go, C4. So I mean, what happens if I try it without, without the print? What would it do? It would say, what are you talking about? Compile error, invalid use of property. Mo by the way, most of these error messages you get when you're starting will make absolutely no sense. That, just accept that as part of, it's kind of like a rite of initiation into you know, being a programmer. Realize that these, me these messages don't mean anything to anybody. OK, so now, of course, if I change the cell over here now to D5 and execute that same now, active cell refers to a different cell, I get a different result here. So property is just something that tells me the way the, the object is. Now, some properties are, um, they are they're, uh, they're, I can only read them. They're read-only properties. Can you imagine what, what carnage would break loose if I could change the address of that cell? What happened if I say, you know, that's cell D5. Eh, let's call it E12 from now on. Good idea or a bad idea? That is a really bad idea. And so this is so the address is a read-only property. You can read it. You can ask what's the at, what's the value of that property, but you can't change it. But there are other properties you can change. And so any property you should be able to query. You should be able to ask what's the value of that property. Some properties you can change. So let's take a look at this. Let's, let's do another way to refer to that cell. Instead of by the active cell, we'll do it this way. Range, and then in parentheses and inside of quotes, I will put the cell reference, C4. So now, instead of referring to it by saying whatever cell is active, I'm specifically saying that's, that's, the, that's the, the cell that I'm after. 
uh, or the range. That could be a multi-cell range, but we'll start with single-cell ranges. Now I'm going to say dot value. And I will say equals some new value. What should we put in there? 22. I'm going to execute that line by hitting enter. And now I have changed the value. Hmm, value is kind of a bad one to use here because I've actually changed the value of the property named in value. Yeah, the, there's actually a property named value, and I changed the value of the value property. Hmm, I don't like it. Let's choose, let's choose a different one. Um, let me put like some other values up here. 1 two, uh, or 12, 13, 14. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is instead of changing the value, E-A-L-U-E, -E, whoops, I'm going to change the formula. The formula of that cell, I'm going to set it equal to a new value. And so this is a syntax that we're going to get very familiar with. So I've got an equal sign here, and the equal sign is not an assertion of equality. The equal sign is an, ass is a, is an assignment statement. I am saying, take whatever is over here on the right-hand side of this equal sign and put it into what's on the left-hand side. And so um, we're get familiar with the use of quotes. Just trust me for now. I need quotes around this. I'm going to put equals sum open parenthesis C1 colon C3. C1 colon C3 close parenthesis. And now this is an instruction. I am saying I want to change the value of the formula property of that object. And so what do you think it's going to do? Someone predict, prognosticate. What will happen when I hit enter? Yeah. He's going to put that formula in the cell. Is it going to show the formula? No, it's going to show the, just like what a cell does when it has a formula, it shows the result. You know, unless you're in some other strange mode that says show the formula. And so I'll execute that line. And sure enough, I look right here, I can see that the, the, the formula is in there and it is now showing the value. At this point, I can ask, can say print range C4 dot value, and it's got the AL, and it's showing me now the value. I can ask it to print the formula. That's right. That's the property I changed. I should be able to ask for the formula, and it should tell me the formula of that cell. Lots of different properties. There's dozens of properties. That each range has. Go ahead. If you want to access the cell, is there a is range only way to access the same cell? Okay, so the question is, I'm gonna repeat it for the recording, but the question is, is that the only way to access an individual cell? And I can answer the that question. Any question that starts out, is that the only way? I don't have to hear the rest of the question. The answer is no. There's other ways. There's always other ways. Um, in fact, when I'm referring to a particular cell. Let's just look at another way to do it. Yeah, there's a there's another whoops. There's another um, well print, so I can say cells. Now range, I say range, it takes a it takes a collection of characters that I can identify as a range. Cells, not so much. Cells takes a row number and a column number. So this is row four, column three. Four, comma three, and that's now that is a reference to the same C4. That's a, it's a reference to that object. And once I've got to this object, the same other stuff will apply. Because it's, it's not like formula is somehow bound on to this range, this, this word range here. Formula is bound on to the object that this range identifies. And so this range here, identif or this cells identifies exactly the same object. I should be able to plug in exactly the same methods afterwards and see the same thing because it's just a different way to get at that same object. Are there other ways? There's still other ways. Yeah, I can probably think of six different ways to refer to that particular cell. Question? So if you change dot, dot value to see earlier, you still get the same thing. Why is it? Oh, question is, what if you just get rid of value altogether, what's going to happen? Oh, how I wish you hadn't asked this question. <sighs> but I see I will have to answer it. Okay, folks. Pay attention to this. This is somewhat unfortunate. I mean, now, this is not really, it's not entirely unfortunate. 
uh, range, let's just do this, print range, and I'm not going to put any property on this. I'm just going to say print range in that number. I'm going to a little space here. Okay. Now, what object, what am I referring to there? I'm referring to an object. An object is a really complex thing that's got dozens of properties, dozens of methods. How could I possibly print that? And in some programming environments, you say print an object, it like does its best to say print the whole thing out. It's like a prints off a big thing. It's got every property that you've got in it. Here it is. You got it. Not VBA. VBA, and this is part of the philosophy of the language. The, you know, the good folks in Redmond, Washington, who are putting this language together for us, they said this. We want to guess what the user means when they're not really specific. And this is, this is the philosophy of the language that goes beyond what I'm talking about right now. It is pervasive throughout the language. Where it says, you have said something that's not quite all there. But we're going to do our best to figure it out. Well, I said print the object. And it, it, in its heart of hearts, the interpreter wants to say, you haven't, no, you haven't, you haven't told me enough here. But it's going to say, I've got your back, I think, almost always. When someone just wants to refer to a, a range, they're most interested in the value of that range. And so even if I don't say dot value on the end, it will print the value property. Most objects have a default property that if you don't specify any property, it will say, ah, you must mean the default property. In this case, is value. Um, and so it, it is an un it's, the reason it's unfortunate is because if you start coding like this, it is going to lead to sloppy habits. You know, like it'll, it'll probably kind of commence just with, with slouching while you're typing. Um, but before long, you'll be programming in your underwear <laughs> and living on Doritos and, and um, Mountain Dew. It's, a, it's the wrong road to start down. Okay. So... So, so the point is, the, the reason it works is because the language says, mm, you haven't told me everything here, but I'm going to guess what you meant. And I, I, I want to at least start off the class saying, when I say an object, don't print it. I'm I want to actually get down into the, the value. Now, what would happen if I tried to write a formula into the value? So what if I said range c4.value equals this formula? You hit enter, and it does just fine. It puts that same, what, and again, the interpreter goes, oh, you put a value into the formula property. That's not what you meant. You meant, or, or you, I'm sorry, you put a formula into the value property. You probably really meant to put that into the formula property, and it shifts and does it for you. I don't think it should do that. I think it should put, as the value, equals that thing. It should put that whole thing out there. That's not what it does. Why not? It's a philosophy of the language. We're going to try to guess what you really meant. Even if what you told me wasn't ambiguous, like, like here it says, uh, you must really mean the formula. Go ahead. So you're uh, accessing the property from the shell or the shell. Does the property have to be um, uppercase to the first letter of it? Oh, so here's a question. So do we have to have, you know, does the property have to be uppercase for the first letter? That's a really strange question since this one's not, and it seemed to work just fine. So what we're going to see is that when we get into actually recording code that sticks around, is that the interpreter, not the interpreter, but the editor is going to going to is going to let us know it recognized what we typed, and so properties is going to put the first letter capital, and that's a really nice thing because when you type it there and it goes capital, you go ah I typed it right, it recognized what I was what I was doing, and so that's really why why they do it, it makes your code look a little more consistent, but importantly it lets you know it recognized what you're what you're looking at, uh, but no it's not it's the, the names of properties and objects or or these, um, well. I haven't introduced that word yet, but the names are generally not case sensitive. Um, when we're comparing two collections of letters to each other, we'll be case sensitive, but we'll, we'll get familiar with case sensitivity. Okay, so the first characteristic that's important to us is this idea of a property. Just a value that describes the way an object is. Sometimes we can read, write to them. All, in all cases, we can read from them. There's no such thing as a write-only property. I mean, if you can write to it, you can read it as well. Now, the second really important characteristic of objects is a method. Oh, how, it, sounds it sounds like a normal word to me. I have said the word method so many times, it sounds normal. I have to remember when I first heard it, that's a really weird word. What does a method mean? Well, it turns out that a method is something that an object knows how to do. 
property, some value that describes the way the object is. Method is an activity that the object itself knows how to do. 80 statements or so in Visual Basic, not that much. But because objects can have methods, objects themselves can know how to do things, then there's lots more that we can do because the objects have their own kind of statements, and those, those are called methods. Let's take a look. So but the important thing to realize here, the critical thing here to grasp today, is that a method of an object, is it, it is not the language doing something to the object. It is the object doing something that it knows how to do. It's functionality that's built into the object. For example, any cell knows how to make itself active. So I'm going to come over here to A1, and then I'm going to come back to my code, and instead of printing range C4, I'm going to say range C4 dot, and the very first property here is called, or method is called activate. Now, you can tell the difference. Probably can't see so much on the screen because it's kind of small, but... We've got properties here which look like a little finger pointing at a note card that's got like name value pairs on it. That's just the best icon that could come up for property. I don't know what they were thinking. I, I can't think of a better one, but this one for the method, it looks like, like, a, like an eraser being thrown through the air. It's an object doing something. That's what a method is. And so it's something the object knows how to do. And so range C4.activate. Now, when we talked about the property, a property by itself isn't an instruction. We have to do something with the property. We have to put a new value into the property. We have to read that value out, like print it, or you know, maybe assign it to something else. A method is an instruction. And so the method can just go as a statement by itself. So here, we don't have to say print range c4.activate or range c4.activate equals something. In fact, we couldn't do that because it's an instruction. So I'm going to hit enter. Now watch the active cell indicator on the worksheet. When I hit enter, presto, that range became the active cell because, that every, because every range object has built into it the activate method. It knows how to make itself active. Right? We, have, we, have, we have told this cell, go activate yourself, and it does. The critical thing here is that when I look at activate, activate is not a part of the VBA language where I'm saying, here's something that's part of the VBA language, apply that part of the language to this range. No, no, no. The range knows how to activate. And so I'm, all I'm using VBA to do is to, is to tell that range to do its activate instruction, to do its method. So the method is built in. Question? Is there a built-in built print function? And the answer is mm. That's the answer. Um, so what we're actually seeing here is we are seeing the print method of an object called debug, of a debug object. Um, there is a built-in print, there's a statement, part of VBA called print, but it's actually for writing data out to files. Like if you're writing a text file, that's what print does. So it's built in, but it's probably not doing what you think it should be doing. Um, okay. Now, another kind of one more thing that's a little bit to, to make things even more complex. Instead of activate, I'm going to backspace over the dot, and hit the dot again, and that'll bring up my choices. The next method here is called add comment. Can you guess what add comment might do? Someone throw it out. Add it's going to put a comment on the cell. Have you seen a comment on the cell? I used Excel for a long time before I knew you could put comments. Um, and this is what it will do. So this will add a comment. Now, if I just said range C4 add comment, it's going to be like, well, what comment are you talking about? What, you want Excel to think of a good comment to put on C4? I mean, it's like I, it doesn't, I haven't given enough information. So some methods. Besides like just saying do the method, the method has to know something about how to do what you're asking it to do. So here's an example, add comment. I'm going to hit the space bar, and I get a little more help here. It's called uh, add comment, and then I can see there's something called, in, something called text. Ah, so I can specify the text. Again, I'll put this in quotes. We'll get familiar with why and when you need quotes later. For now, just believe. Um, this, ooh, this is cell C4. That's a great comment. In case you're wondering, that's what it is. Now, I'm going to, so you're going to watch really closely on range C4, cell C4. I'm going to hit enter on this line, and we're going to see the comment go in. It's, it doesn't do that much, but it's going to, bing, there's that little red triangle. That's how I know there's a comment on the cell. And when I hover over that, 
it should bring up that comment. There it is. This is cell C4. So methods sometimes require arguments, and, and sometimes it can be a long list of arguments that we need to put in there. In this case, it only takes one, but you get the idea. The method might need to have some context to know how to accomplish what you're telling it to do. Add comment, you've got to give it the comment to put onto the cell. Okay. Um, if I try to execute this again, it's going to give an error. It's going to say, look, you only get one comment, buddy. And it's a great error. Application defined or object defined error. That's a lot of help. So, so I start to wonder how, oh, how could I figure out how to get rid of that comment? I might just kind of look through the list of methods. Maybe there's something called remove comment. And I'd look through that if I know there's no remove comment. What's my next step? Override it. No, I mean, if I'm trying to figure this out, what's my next? Those of you who are programming, so you just come across this, something I'm pretty sure I can do. I don't know how to do it. I'm going to? Google I'll Google it. Now, that's everyone who said Google, right at the tip of your tongue, that means you've got experience programming in some other environment, and that experience is not going to serve you well. Because that should be the second thing you think of. The first thing you think of should be what? Any thoughts? Record myself doing it. This is a feature that most programming languages you don't have. Say there's something I know I could do in Excel. I have no idea how to do it in VBA. I'm going to record myself doing it. Let's just see it real quick. We'll see it in action. I'm going to come back to my developer tab. Oh, I'm still on the developer tab. And right here, hmm, because I'm a little, it doesn't actually say record macro because I'm scrunched down a little bit. Let me go large again. So it says record macro right here. I'm going to click on record macro. It's going to say, what name do you want? <laughs> macro one, that's a fine name. We'll talk about all this in a couple of, um, a week from today, we'll talk about this in detail. I'll call it macro one, that's great. And I'll say, okay, it's recording what I'm doing. I'm gonna right click the cell. I'm gonna come down here to where it says, delete note. And there it's deleted it. I'll stop, very important to remember to stop recording. Uh, one time I started recording a macro, my wife called me and I forgot that I was recording. I went back to work for like three or four hours in Excel and I recorded thousands and thousands of lines of VBA. I felt so productive. Okay, so I stop that. I'm going to come back over here to VBA. Now, that's not going to do anything in my immediate window. It's just where I practice. Let's see, if you're recording this, I probably want it to stick around. So I'm going to look over here in my Project Explorer, and here I can see, here's my VBA project, book one. Here's my modules. And, and, and the module is where I put VBA code that I want to stick around. It's a part of the workbook. This is a module. Here's module one. And module one has one macro, macro one here, and there it is. Selection.ClearContents. Ah, that's the method, clear contents. And so if I come up here and say range C4.ClearContents, range, uh, range C4.ClearContents. I'll execute that line all by itself here. And oh, it was already clear. So let me go ahead and hit enter this one. That'll put the content on, the comment on, execute the next one, and it'll take it off. So, and the first thing to realize, and this is something that you'll have to unlearn if you're an experienced, but there have been times, folks, I have like looked for hours for how to do something, and then it finally occurs to me, oh, let me record myself doing it, and we'll see exactly what I need to do. Recording doesn't always do just what you hope it will do, but it almost always gives you a good starting point there. So, we've seen objects. Objects have two characteristics that are critical to us. What are they called? Properties and methods. A property is it's the quality of the object. It's something that describes the way the object is. And of those properties I change, if I change it, I change the way the object is. Or a method, which is an action the object can do. That's enough for today to get started. We're going to meet again on Wednesday, and we will talk about variables. Class dismissed.